All right, so once again, hello everyone and welcome to this online workshop. Um, these online workshops are hosted by volunteers in the WordPress community. And, and the goal is to provide a safe space where we can ask questions, um, learn different features about WordPress, um, or in today's case, learn you about contributing to WordPress. Um, so feel free to use the Zoom chat to ask your questions anytime through the presentation. You can also unmute and ask your question directly, and I'd be happy to um, answer them for you. So um, I'm Ben. I have been using WordPress for eight, nine years. I live in Japan. Um, so it is 9 a.m. Friday morning for me right now. And um, I have been working with the WordPress training team for just under two years now. Um, I joined the team two years ago. And then last year, I was nominated as the team rep or the team representative. Um, and the team representative's main role is to make sure the team runs smoothly and to then connect the team with the main WordPress project. So if there are any mandates that the project wants the team to work on, that will come through the team rep to then distill into the team. Um, and the opposite as well, if there's any questions or problems the team encounters, that goes to the team rep back into the WordPress project. So um, yeah, I'm excited to introduce the training team to you. Um, today's goal I'll, is to give you an overview of what the training team is, what we do, how we communicate, um, how contributions are made, um, and then to give you some extra links uh, for you to then investigate further. Um, ultimately, I would love for everyone in this call to join the training team as a contributor, uh, but hopefully you'll have enough information and resources to take home with you um, to investigate more, consider if this is the team you want to join or not. Um, so let's start from make.wordpress.org. So I'll drop this link in the Zoom chat as well. WordPress is a software built by volunteers all around the world. It's a free software. Um, it is open source, which means anybody can look at the code, anybody can contribute to the code, anybody can redistribute the code. Um, and so it, it is a software. But WordPress is also the name of the community behind the software. So we have um, this make.wordpress.org page introduces the community no, aspect. It's a site with multiple users. Sorry, say that again? No, I just hit the wrong button, sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, so wordpress.org will take you to the software download page. And then make.wordpress.org takes you to the community page um, to, so you can get to know the community that makes WordPress. And there are thousands of us, ten, tens of thousands, I think, all around the world who contribute to WordPress through different teams. And I won't go through all of them, but on this page, you'll see a list of all the teams involved in creating WordPress. So we have the core team, um, which are responsible for making the actual core software. And we also have a design team who figure out how the new features are going to look in the software. And we have the mobile team to make sure the software runs correctly on mobile. We have an accessibility team um, to make sure the software is accessibility compliant. Um, we then have like polyglots who translate uh, the software into different languages. We have support, we have documentation, themes, et cetera. And the list goes on. I think we have like 22 teams right now. Um, the newest team was the sustainability team that was created just last year, I believe. Um, so at, this sort of gives you a, a quick glance that it's not just um, coding. There's also people who consider like the performance side of it or people who contribute photos to the WordPress photo directory. Um, so there's a lot more you can do in WordPress um, besides just coding as well. Um, and today we're going to be looking at the training team. Um, so the training team um, focuses on creating education resources to help people learn WordPress. So we have the software, we have the documentation, but then when somebody uses WordPress for the very first time, they still need some handholding to just understand how all the pieces fit together. And the training team's mandate is to create those resources, those video tutorials or these online workshops you're attending right now um, to help people understand WordPress and help them get involved more. 
Um, so the training team, we operate the website learn.wordpress.org. So at the moment, we're on make.wordpress.org, um, but learn.wordpress.org is the WordPress project's official education website. So I'll drop that in the meeting ch chat here. Um, and um, we call this Learn WordPress. Um, so learn.wordpress.org and the Learn WordPress website. Um, again, this website is fairly new. So um, until a few years ago, the main place people would gather and learn about WordPress was at community meetups. Um, so there are meetup groups all around the world happening quite regularly uh, where different people get together, ask questions, share knowledge, um, and learn about WordPress. Well, as you all know, COVID happened and meetups all around the world paused for a few years. Um, and so the WordPress project realized we needed a new online place where people could get together and continue learning about WordPress. And that's when the Learn WordPress website really kicked off. It was sort of in the works from um, 2012, I think it was, so just under 10 years, um, but it really kicked off during COVID. And so the Learn WordPress website, um, I won't go into too much detail, but I will say we currently have four different types of content here. Um, and it's easiest to see in the top menu bar. So Learn WordPress, we have tutorial videos, uh, we have online workshops, we have online courses, and we have lesson plans. So tutorials are about five minute long videos and that teach you a feature about WordPress. This could be about using a block editor. It could be about how to run site up to, um, backups. It could be about how to develop your own code um, for your website. Um, so we really have a lot of different topics here. Um, online workshops, uh, workshops like you're attending right now, um, live virtual sessions where you can join, ask questions. Um, and these happen, I think we have like two or three sessions a week at the moment going on at different time zones all around the world. Online courses are your typical online courses. So these are self-guided um, lessons you can take one after the other. Some of them have great assessments uh, for you to sort of learn a chunk of WordPress. Um, we have like how to build your first website. We have how to um, build your first block theme. We have um, how to contribute to the polyglots team, the translation team. Um, so again, many different topics covered in our courses. And then finally, lesson plans. Lesson plans uh, are different from the other three in that they are aimed at the teachers of WordPress. So if you are a teacher and you're about to teach a class, some topic about WordPress, um, you can download our lesson plans and these will give you like a 60 minute class outline. So it gives you the different teaching aids you can use, different activities you can give your class. Um, and um, it, these, are, these resources are aimed at helping teachers teach WordPress. So we have four um, content types at the moment, um, but what we're finding is people are getting lost on the website. And so people come to the website for the first time um, and they want to learn about WordPress, but they end up in lesson plans or they want to teach WordPress and they end up in online workshops. And so currently the training team is doing a full redesign of the Learn WordPress website. Again, this is something the project sort of put together during COVID. We had to quickly get resources together to help the community. Um, so we got through COVID. And now that different meetups are starting up again, um, we're taking some time to actually reevaluate this website and redesign it um, so that it is the go-to resource for anyone all over the world who wants to learn WordPress. I think now, if you want to learn something about WordPress, you'll probably go to your favorite search engine and search it. Um, you might even go to YouTube and search for video and you have tons of resources there. The Word Pro WordPress project's goal is that all these different content creators working um, all over the world can come together and contribute their resources into one location. And this Learn WordPress website becomes that go-to resource for learners of WordPress. And the training team looks after this website. All right, let me pause there quickly. Um, that gives you a very high level overview 
of where the training team fits in the WordPress project, what our mandate is. Are there any questions so far? Um, you can unmute and ask, or you can drop in the Zoom chat. If you don't have any questions, you can give me a thumbs up. Um, any questions so far? Gwen, thank you for the thumbs up. You're welcome. All right. Everything clear, Carolina, thank you. Okay, so now that you know what the training team's mandate is, how do we actually do that? So we are people living all over the world, all different time zones. How do we actually coordinate and look after the load WordPress website? So coming back to the make.wordpress.org page here, each of these team names will take you to that team's blog. Um, every team has its own blog. I'm going to click on the training team, and this will take us to the training team blog. So the URL, pretty simple. It's make.wordpress.org slash training. Um, so you can change that last word between the slashes um, to get to each team's blog. And actually, when you first come to the blog, you'll, the page will look like this. Um, there's a great welcome box here, um, which sort of gives you some overview of the team. Um, but you can also hide this box. I visit this site regularly, so I have the box closed. Um, so first of all, the blog is where the decisions are made. So um, on the right here, you'll see we have an email updates subscribe form. Um, you can subscribe to the blog and you can start getting the post in your email just to get an idea of um, how the decisions are made in the team, what discussions are being had. Um, but I want to highlight three links in particular. Um, so in the top blue menu bar, you'll see we have three links. We have getting started, handbook, and faculty members. Now, getting started is the link I want you to go to if you're getting started with the training team. So this will take you to the training team's onboarding program. Um, and we'll dive into that just a little bit more in just a moment. Um, but if you're if you're first time with the training team, you want to start contributing, the best place to go is this getting started link. The second link here is the team's handbook. And I'll open this and give us a quick, um, show us what this looks like. So every WordPress team has a handbook which documents the different processes in the team. So this is the training team handbook. Um, and you'll see we have quite an extensive table of contents on the left here. And if you open these, you then get another quite extensive sub menu and then the sub sub menu. There's just a lot of content here. So I don't recommend reading through the handbook just right off the bat. Um, the handbook is more a resource to go to once you start contributing and you have different questions. So I want to do this. I wonder how you do that. Um, so for example, an online workshop, how can I facilitate an online workshop? How can I host one? Um, so we have a full section here on online workshops, um, which talk about how to apply to facilitate, how to plan one, how to schedule one, et cetera. Um, or maybe you start to get involved with the team and you want to help us build out a lesson. Um, how do you do that? So we have a full section on how to create a lesson, how to review a lesson, how to publish a lesson, et cetera. Um, so no need to read through the handbook necessarily, but um, it's good to keep in mind where it lives. Um, and we also have a search bar here for if and when you contribute, um, you can search through the handbook here. So that was getting started handbook. And the third link are our faculty members. So um, the faculty program is a unique program only in the training team. Um, so WordPress project has many teams. Each team, their contribution methods are a bit different. Uh, but for example, if you are part of one of the teams that do a lot of coding, then generally your contribution will be you come to that team, you open the team's GitHub repository, you find a bug or an issue that is waiting for some code, you will develop the code on your local environment, um, you'll push the code up to GitHub, that gets reviewed, and then that gets added into the WordPress code base. If you're a developer and you're used to this process, then this one contribution 
could be completed in about 30 minutes. Um, so these code-based teams is easy for people to come in just their spare time, contribute 30 minutes here and there, um, and still leave an impact. The training team is a little different. <clears throat> for example, <clears throat> um, we publish like five minute tutorial videos. If, you're, um, if you have experience creating content, video content, you'll probably know creating a five minute video takes much longer than just 30 minutes. Um, you have to write a script, you have to get your, your screen slide presentation ready, you have to record, you then have to edit, you have to um, upload this, you have to subtitle it. There's just so many processes involved in creating a single piece of content. Um, and so while we do have different areas of contribution people can come and do in their spare time, there are some things that we need people to dedicate a little bit more time um, to really take to completion. And that's where the faculty program comes in. So the, the members of the faculty program are people who have said, I am going to dedicate um, slightly larger chunks of my time um, to help the training team reach their goals and um, complete their mission. So um, there's no um, time requirement specifically for the faculty program. Some people have just said, I can contribute two hours a week. Um, some people have said I can contribute 20 hours a week. Um, so that time does vary between contributors. But these are people who have said, um, I support the team, I understand what the vision is, and I will contribute just a little bit more time than the average contributor might to help us get um, to get our content created and published. Um, so there's a, there's a big list of people here. These faculty members, we have a check-in survey yearly. So it's generally a, a year by year commitment. And you know, I mean, if things come up, people can leave the faculty program. Um, we are accepting new applicants anytime throughout the year. Um, and so again, if you're like stuck on something, these faculty members are the best people to ask because they have the most experience and knowledge working in the training team. Um, so the faculty members are your go-to people to ask for help um, if you need, if you get stuck. And um, the handbook is our uh, written documentation about how all the different team processes work. And we also have Getting Started, our onboarding program. Um, and I'm going to sort of walk through the onboarding program now with you in this video um, to give you an overview of the team. Um, but once again, let me just quickly pause there. Are there any questions so far? Um, hopefully I haven't lost anyone. How is it going? So far so good. Okay, great. <laughs> I can answer for everybody. Yeah, 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 no, but thank you, Gwen. Thank you for conducting the presentation. Yep, my pleasure. All right, well, so we've had a look at the great big WordPress project and where the training team fits in that. We know what the Learn WordPress website is. We know we're starting to get into the details of how the training team operates in order to maintain that website. Um, so the rest of this time, I'm going to walk us through quickly the onboarding program here. Um, I'm not going to go through all the details, but this will give you a better idea of how we communicate with each other, where you might be able to start with your first contribution um, and so on. So um, just let me share this link once more in the Zoom chat. Um, we came to the WordPress training team blog. We clicked on getting started. And this is the onboarding program. So it starts off, welcome to the training team. Um, and then it says, please take a moment to watch the video below. This will introduce the training team's mission, how we operate as a team. And it is the first step in onboarding to the team and making your first contribution. And if you scroll down a bit more, you'll see a familiar face here um, who then takes three minutes to um, sort of give you a quick overview of what the training team does. Um, which I've already sort of covered in this call. Okay, so the training team, we communicate in three locations. We communicate on the team blog, um, which I introduced to you before. We communicate in an application called Slack, and we also communicate on GitHub. So Slack, um, hopefully people here are familiar with it. It's like a, a chat application. Um, 
the WordPress project um, has been um, gifted um, unlimited Slack accounts from the Slack um, company. So they agree with the WordPress mandate and how we want to um, contribute to WordPress, the open source, the open web. Um, and so they've provided us Slack accounts, which people can use for free um, to communicate with, e with each other. So this is a, a real-time communication tool. Um, so if you're like, if you're getting started with the training team and you're going through the onboarding program and you're stuck, then you have a question, you need it answered right away, then Slack is the place to go to. And then you can ask your question in the training team channel. And anybody who's online at that moment um, will see the notification and they can help you and answer that for you. So Slack is where the real-time communication happens. But in the training team, we make it very clear that Slack is not where decisions are made. So decisions are made on the team blog. So conversations happen in Slack, um, but decisions are made on the team blog. And the reason for this is you need an account to log into Slack and see the conversation. So although it's free and anybody can create an account, it's still sort of closed behind doors a bit. Whereas the team blog is just a website on the internet Anybody can comment on it. Um, it is indexed by search engines, so it will be recorded in the internet history forever. Um, so we want to make our decisions as open and public as possible. So uh, while we might have different conversations in Slack, if a decision needs to be made, it will always be taken to a post on the training team blog. And um, we generally have things open for two weeks. So a post is published, there's a call for feedback. And then two weeks later, um, the person who submitted the post will make like a final comment and said, thank you for your discussion. Based on all the input, this is the decision we're going to move forward with. Um, so there's a clear distinction that decisions are made on the team blog and real-time communication happens in Slack. Then the third tool we use is GitHub. Now, GitHub can seem overwhelming. Um, and I, so please give me three minutes to, let, to, to give you a quick overview of GitHub um, so it doesn't overwhelm you. And I can show you, you don't need to be a developer to use GitHub. So the uh, training team, we have the WordPress slash learn GitHub repository. This is what it looks like. There's a lot of stuff on this screen, uh, which you can mostly disregard. The most important link on this screen is this one that says projects. So I'm going to click into that. The training team, we, we do a lot of things. Um, we create content, we translate content, we collect feedback from learners to then apply to content. Um, we have topics where new contributors can submit new topics they want to create content for. Um, we have administration, we, have, we do have website development. And so there's just a lot going on. And so we use GitHub to organize everything moving in the team into different projects. So you'll see we have seven projects in the training team. Um, the top one, oh, thank you, Tracy, for sharing the link. The top one here, learn WordPress content development. So this is where content is created. Um, I'll click into that in just a moment, but let's quickly look at the others. This one, learn WordPress content feedback. So if somebody watches a video on YouTube or on the learn WordPress website, and they know this like something might be outdated or there was a typo, um, if they're taking an online course and one of the quizzes doesn't work, um, they can send us feedback. And then uh, editors will look at that feedback and apply the changes to the content. So where does that feedback come to? It comes to the Learn WordPress Content Feedback Project Board. So feedback from learners come into its own project here. We then have Learn WordPress Content Localization. So this is where our translators track their translation progress. And we then have training team administration. Um, so everything that goes on behind the scenes. We then have Learn WordPress website development. So this one is a code-based um, project um, where people are editing the Learn WordPress website code. Um, and when we redesign the website, this is where that's going to happen as well. We also then have Learn WordPress topic vetting and another one, Learning Pathways project. So we have all these projects going on here. So let me click into the content development project and just give you a quick look at what that looks like. 
So GitHub projects are uh, built up from columns. So you'll see we have different columns going down the page here. And issues start in the left column and they move through to the right column. So we're in the content development project board at the moment. The first column says ready to create 93. So this means there are 93 topics that have already been vetted, um, which are ready for folks to create. So 93 topics you can create um, a tutorial for, a lesson plan for. Um, so these topics are things you can jump into right away and start creating. Now, when you start creating on an issue, you'll say, I'd like to take this issue, I'd like to start working on it. And then that moves into the second column, drafts in progress. So we can see here, we have 57 items at the moment where somebody has said, I would like to work on this. And the draft is in progress. <clears throat> So now once an issue has been, uh, sorry, once the content has been created, it is then uploaded to the issue and shared with the team and it moves into the ready for review column. So every piece of content that gets published on Learn um, is first reviewed by at least three people before it becomes public. Um, and there are a few reasons for this. The first one is it can be quite daunting to publish your own content on the internet. Um, and so, having the reviewers make sure there are people there to um, check everything is right, no typos, and make sure the content is accurate and support you before your content goes out live. Um, and it's also a chance for people to give feedback, like maybe you've covered most of the content, but there was something important that you overlooked. And so the review stage allows for folks to give that feedback for you to make the final polishes on your content. So once three reviews have been conducted, it then moves into the preparing to publish stage. And this is where we like technically upload the video into YouTube and add the captions and different things like that. Just the final stages to publish the content. And then once it's published, it moves into the published or closed column. So um, we simply use GitHub to track the progress of all this content development. Um, as you can see, we have easily over a hundred pieces of content in this process. We have 554 closed issues. So 554 things have moved through this process. Um, and you can see the different faces you see here, the people who have taken on the content. So these pieces of content have been assigned to them and they are uh, working on that content. So that's how we use GitHub. So going back to the onboarding program, that those are the three places the training team communicates. So um, we make decisions on the team blog, we have real-time communication in Slack, and then the actual project management is done in GitHub. All right, quick pause, any questions? So far so good. Thank you, Gwen. <laughs> Same right. here. Same. Yep. Thank you, Eagle. Okay. So that is where the training team communicates. So then let's get set up. So what the onboarding program will walk you through is creating an account so you can contribute to those three places, the blog, the Slack, and the GitHub. So while the blog is open and public, anybody can read the blog, you need a WordPress.org account to comment on the blog. So the first thing we walk you through is setting up a WordPress.org account. Um, and the WordPress.org account is also used to track your contributions, not just to the training team, but to the whole um, WordPress, make WordPress project. Um, so every time you make a, a contribution, um, that is all recorded in your profile, your WordPress.org account profile, um, and then you can share that with people. Um, we know sometimes people share this with potential employers um, and it, it, there's a track record of how they've contributed to this project. So the first account you need is a WordPress.org account. The second one you need is a Making WordPress Slack account. And again, if you click on this link, it will take you through the steps of making that Slack account for free. <clears throat> and then the third account you need is a GitHub account. Um, and again, there's a link here to join GitHub. And this then allows you to um, assign different issues in GitHub to yourself and contribute there. 
All right. So that's all the technical stuff in order to get set up and ready to contribute to the training team. Once that's all set up, the next thing the onboarding program walks you through is finding your interest and making your first contribution. So you've probably started to see there are many moving parts in the training team. Um, and we've categorized this into five areas of contribution. So you'll see in this table, we have area of contribution. We've split the training team's different tasks and roles into five areas. The first one is content creator. The second one is content translator. Third one is editor. The fourth one is subject matter expert. And the fifth one is administrator. So going through the top, the main role of the content creator is to create content. So these are the people who write the video script. Um, they make the slides to use in the videos. They record the videos, they edit the videos, um, and then they finally publish the videos. Um, so those are our content creators. Content translators take those English resources and translate them into different languages. Um, now, Learn WordPress, we actually publish content in any language. It doesn't have to start in English. Uh, so we do have some content creators who create content in non-English languages. Um, but just overall, it's, it's been a minority. Most of the time, we are creating English content first, and then a group of translators translate that into different languages. Um, so we have a content translator area of contribution. The next one is editors. Editors have two main roles. The first one is reviewing content before it gets published. Um, so um, you saw before in the GitHub, we have that ready for review column. They look at the issues in that column, review it um, and give the go sign for it to get published. The other thing editors do is they look at the feedback that comes in from learners. Um, and they assess whether the feedback is true. Um, we get sometimes get spam. Um, sometimes the issue is a local issue with that person's computer rather with rather than with the content itself. So the editors sort of assess the feedback, and then um, if there is a valid point there that needs changing, they will then apply the change to the published content. So editors review content before it is published. Um, and they also edit content after it is published based on feedback we get. Subject matter experts. So subject matter experts are experts of specific topics and they assist content creators in, ma in making content. So for example, a content creator doesn't need to know the topic they're creating content for. Uh, for example, I'm not a developer, but if I'm a content creator, I could still make developer-focused content by working with a subject matter expert who is a developer. So that subject matter expert would give me the resources, which me as a content creator, I would then turn into a video or a lesson plan or an online course. Um, and the subject matter expert would sort of review the content and I do the technical turning it into, into a content. Um, so subject matter experts work alongside with our content creators to build content. And the second thing subject matter experts do is they vet content topic ideas. So we have an open um, board where anybody can suggest new topics uh, for content on Learn. And so um, people submit different ideas. And the subject matter experts, because they are very knowledgeable of that, different of the different areas um, of content, they will look at the submitted ideas, first of all, see if it's a valid idea, um, but then second, they will assign a priority to the idea. So somebody might say, um, we, need, we need a video on low WordPress about the 2024 block thing. Um, and then um, if we don't, oh, there's my Zoom come up. Um, so the subject matter expert will look at that, they'll actually look at the Learn website content. Do we already have this content? If not, um, is it a high priority content? Is it a low priority content? So they will vet the content idea and then um, submit that to the content development project board. So before 
you saw there was a column, the very first column in the project development project board said ready to create. So all the ideas in that ready to create first went through a vetting process by subject matter experts. So the subject matter experts have said, yes, this is relevant content, we need to create it. And then they send that to the project development, uh, content development project board. And then content creators pick that up, they make the content and then editors edit the content. And once it's published, the translators translate the content. So these four roles sort of work together to um, create a content from start to finish. And uh, the administrator's main purpose is to make sure these four areas are working smoothly together. So me personally, I probably do a lot of administrating stuff. And so what I do is I keep an eye open to the different roles and how their processes are going. Is there something we can put in place to support them? Um, maybe they, maybe something's broken and they need it fixed. Um, maybe they need special assistance from the WordPress project. And so administrators will pick up on that and support these people in order for them to create content. So those are the five areas of contribution. Um, and you'll see each of these is a separate link. So we have a content creator onboarding, content translator onboarding, editor onboarding, subject matter expert onboarding, and an administrator onboarding. So because the training team, we have so many different areas of responsibility, um, although the onboarding, everybody starts from this page you're seeing right now, it then breaks off into five different pages. So you get to choose which onboarding you'd like to move into. Um, and that's why I'm not going to go into all the details of the onboarding, but hopefully you're, you, you're starting to get a pretty good idea of how the training team operates. All right, and so we have just a few minutes left. Um, thank you, Gwen. We have just a few minutes left. So I'm going to quickly go into the content creator onboarding, give you an overview of what that looks like. Um, the others will be similar, and then um, we'll open it up for final questions. So content creator onboarding, um, it um, gives you a bit of an explanation about the role. And then this, this section here says, introducing our faculty content creators. So rewind about half an hour. You'll remember I introduced um, you to the faculty members in the training team. These are people who have dedicated specific uh, chunks of time to help the team meet its goals. Um, each, of the faculty mem each of the faculty members are actually part of these five areas of contribution. So we have faculty content creators, we have faculty editors, we have faculty subject matter experts, we have faculty administrators, and we have faculty translators. Um, and so whichever part you choose, if you choose to be a content creator, if you choose to be an editor, once you're in that path, you will have a subset of faculty members who are experts in that area of contribution, which you can connect with and ask questions. Um, so each onboarding page has a section that introduces you to the faculty members of that area of contribution. So if you come down here, it says, when reaching out to a content creator faculty, you can also mention the at faculty content creators Slack group in the training channel in Slack. So once you have the Slack account, most of the conversations happen in the training channel. So everybody talks in the training channel. Um, and then you can ping specific people in Slack to get the attention. So if you have a question, you need someone to help you right away, you can ping them individually. Um, but in the training team, we have what's called a Slack group setup. So if you type, this is an example message down here, if you type at faculty hyphen content hyphen creators and send this message, this will send a notification to all our faculty members who are registered as content creators. What's good about this is you don't have to know the specific names or accounts of each faculty member. You can just ping this group and then all the faculty content creators are notified and whoever's online can look at your message and help you right away. So. Um, we've set this up for each of the five areas of contribution, and then it's a way to get people's attention just that much quicker. Um, so 
I wanted to point this out because if you do start getting involved with the training team, for example, I live in Japan, I'm not online 24 hours. Um, so the best way to get help is to ping the faculty members with these um, Slack group pings, and then that will give you the assistance you need um, the quickest. All right. Um, and then the onboarding next walks you through your first contribution. So this first contribution is different for each area of contribution. So if you're an editor, um, you'll be asked to do one thing. If you're a translator, you'll be asked to do something else. And it, it, this is a step-by-step -step guide into you making your first contribution to the training team. Um, so the goal is um, after, by the time you've worked through this onboarding program, um, you would have made your first contribution to the training team or to the WordPress project. You would have left your mark um, on the WordPress project. Um, these first contributions generally take somewhere between 30 and 60 minutes, depending on what area of contribution you choose. Um, so um, once you've made your accounts and you've read through this material, you've made your first contribution, but after about an hour or so, um, you would have contributed to the training team and got a taste of what it feels like um, to contribute to an open source project. Um, so finally, there's a section to come add your name to our list of contributors. Um, so we have a, a, a simple form here you can fill out. This will then notify the faculty administrators so we, we can know who has completed onboarding, who might need um, some more assistance um, to get involved with the team. Uh, but basically, it's just a way for you to let us know um, you're eager, you want to join, and you're ready to, to take on more. So then finally, we have, we'd like to hear your feedback. Um, and then what's next? And so depending on what area of contribution you chose, we have tons of things you can then work on next. So while your first contribution is sort of guided through um, in the onboarding program, your second contribution and on is more create your own adventure type um, experience. So if you're a content creator, you can next write a lesson plan or you can facilitate an online workshop or you can create a tutorial. And each of these links will then take you to that next adventure, your next contribution to WordPress. And then the final link we share in the onboarding program is the training team meeting times. So this will be the last link I'll share with folks. Um, so I'll share this link in the Zoom chat. Um, and this calendar will show the meeting times in your local time zone. So um, at the moment, this says, um, the training team weekly meeting starts at 9 a.m. That's because I'm in Japan. So it's 9 a.m. for me Thursday. Um, but for most of the folks in this online workshop right now, it will probably be Thursday, uh, sorry, fr Wednesday evening for you. Um, so open this link um, in your own browser and you'll be able to check the times out there. Um, but these meetings, so the training team weekly meetings, this happens in Slack. And so this is the Slack channel, the training channel. Um, but once again, decisions aren't made in Slack. So Slack is where we have the meetings and we have conversations. Um, but if there is ever anything that needs to ha have a decision made on it, um, that is then taken to a blog post, which we can then have um, asynchronous conversations there as well. So the training team week weekly meetings is more a place for you to just get a feel of what's going on right now any important notices from the WordPress project the team needs to know of. Um, and so it just gives you a pulse check of what the training team is at at that moment. We then have two other tons of types of meetings. Um, the second one here, <clears throat> training dev squad triage session. So this one is more developer focused. If you have a developer background, um, each week um, the dev squad takes 30 minutes to go through our GitHub project boards and triage the new issues that came in that week. So just make sure if it's spam, we close it out. If it's relevant, um, just make sure it's labeled properly. Has it been put into the correct project board? Um, can they move anything forward? Um, so if you have that developer background, um, join the team in the Meta Learn Slack channel. Um, and that's a 30 minute meeting each week, um, which you can get involved with as well. And then finally, training team coffee hour. Um, so these coffee hours are very casual um, video sessions where most of the time we work in 
um, with Slack and blog posts. So it's text-based, uh, but these are times each week where we actually have a video session where you can show your face, connect with other contributors, get to know each other, ask your questions in person, um, and clear things out. Um, currently, <clears throat> um, these run at 10 p.m. my time, so I don't attend these, um, but um, depending on where you are in the world, you might be able to attend these as well. So these are the different meetings that happen in the training team. <clears throat> um, and yeah, that's that's pretty much what I had prepared today. So we started from the big WordPress project, figured out what the, where the training team sits in that, what the training team does. And then we went into some of the details of where we communicate, how we communicate, and how you can now get involved as well. So that was a lot of talking on my part. Um, we have a few minutes left. Are there any questions people have? Anything maybe I didn't quite answer for you? Eagle, I see you unmuted. Did you have something? Well, I was just looking at your training team meetings on your calendar. They're, they're 5 a.m. on Friday and 11 p.m. for the training dev on Wednesdays. It's like, wow. Um, yes. So <laughs> these meeting times are basically decided on where people show the most interest. So for example, the dev squad triage session, we did have an American time zone one going at one stage. And I think this is more European time zone. Um, but then the interest in the American time zone sort of weaned off a bit. So mm, we cut I that. See. But if people are interested again, we can definitely start these different meetings, especially that triage session up again. Um, and we'll connect faculty members with you um, to start that up. So if you're interested, um, comment in the Slack channels, um, say you'd like to join, it's just the wrong time zone, and we can take the conversation from there. Gotcha. So if you're interested in, say, like the web development part, where where mm -hmm. is that? Okay, good see, question. I don't see any meetings about that. Good question. So the web development we actually don't have a big focus on. Um, so it's there, but the developers are sort of coming in and doing it um, based on their experience with other teams. Um, so now that you mention it, that is something we can probably create an onboarding path for, for developers. Um, let me share a specific link with you. So under our how-to guides, we have... Developing Learn WordPress. Okay, so let me share this link in the Zoom chat. Um, and this page will walk you through how you can start getting involved um, with the development part of WordPress. Um, so take a look at this page. And then okay. um, if you have any questions, um, you can definitely ask in the training channel. I will say um, the, with that development project board, da, 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 Learn WordPress website development project board, if you're familiar with GitHub, then basically these are the issues that are open and you can work on. Um, you have some triaged issues, which you can also take up. We have issues in progress. We have then, for example, PRs that are in the review stage and then completed. Um, so if you're familiar with GitHub, you can even just jump right into this GitHub project board and take up an issue and contribute there. Oh, okay. Yep. I have to um, take a look at that. Yeah, and I will also make a note that we can probably have a developer-focused onboarding program um, now that you mentioned that. So thank you. No problem. <laughs> All right. Uh, so Nick Diego works on, on documentation. Where does he fit in? Does he Is he involved mm -hmm. with the training at all? So he is more a liaison between training and documentation or okay. training. Okay. And we have a team called Meta, which looks after the infrastructure of the WordPress project. Um, so he's not part of the training team, but we do work with him um, to co collaborate with other teams. I think right. he does online workshops every now and then, though. 
Um, he does. Oh, um, yeah, yeah. He's very yeah. active. I mean, yeah. He, he, he was at Bill, he was at uh, WB Engine right before he went over right. to right. Automatic. So I, I interacted with him in the build mode group and stuff. Oh, uh, uh, okay. One of the things that I see come up in our help desks a lot mm -hmm. is that with the introduction of full site editing, mm -hmm. uh, well, back up a step. Uh, mm -hmm. In the general settings for WordPress, the mm -hmm. default settings are the homepage is a blog archive mm -hmm. from, from the classic setups. So mm -hmm. basically your homepage is hello world. And then mm -hmm. if you want to change that, you go in, you create a homepage and then you create a blog, an empty blog page. And then you change mm -hmm. your general uh, read settings to, uh, to the, a static homepage and then to the blog page. Mm -hmm. But in full site editing, the, the trend that everybody seems to be following is that the blog archive page, the blog template is it's treated differently. It's actually turned into, uh, uh, in some cases, static homepages. And mm -hmm. it's very confusing for people getting started how to actually go about setting things up. There's there's not a lot of instruction about the fact, oh, if you really want to create your own homepage, you need to set up a homepage. You need to set up, you know, and change these settings. Everybody yep. just talks yep. about going in and, oh, you can change templates. You can change stuff. Oh, of course you mm -hmm. can if you have a lot of experience in that and understand mm -hmm. it and mm -hmm. really have a, a a head wrap around the hierarchy of the templates, mm -hmm. it, it, it's easier to get a grip on. But even for myself and for my peer help desk uh, organizers, uh, getting getting our heads wrapped around, you know, what happened with the templates and full site editing took a mm -hmm. while. We had to really do some deep discovery to find out what in the world is going on because people would come and ask us questions. It's like, oh yeah, we can fix that. And it's like, oh, we can't. <laughs> you know, it's like yeah. it's like we had to do some really deep uh digging to find out mm -hmm. what was going on in terms of how people how the how the new themes were being built. And mm -hmm. uh, so it's a it's a very confusing thing. And and I see a lot of training about oh here's a thing here's a Here's the site editor. Here's the templates. Here's the page. You can change it. Here's the views. Here's the filters, but not really a lot of practicality about how to actually go about setting up your site. Right. So yeah. that's, that's one of the things I've run across and that's. Yep. Yeah. No, I, no, no, I, I don't know how to get that part of my life in where that fits into the training. Cause I don't really want to create content. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. I'm not the most beautiful person or the best speaker, uh, <laughs> you know. <laughs> mm. uh, yeah, but, yeah. No, I appreciate you for your um, feedback. Um, Tracy, did I see you were going to step in with a comment or something? Well, I was just going to say, well, number one, you don't have to be on screen when you create the content. <laughs> a lot of people yep. on the lessons or the, or the tutorials are all speaking in the background and you're looking at the screens changing. Um, and I, I, I agree with, uh, especially 2024, when you, when you open it up, uh, it's difficult with the blog, um, blog archive page being the homepage and you don't really notice it's about three quarters of the way down the page before you actually see the blog archive. Um, all the rest mm -hmm, is mm -hmm. fixed information in the template. So I agree with that. It's it can be confusing, especially for someone new. Yeah. Um, I guess what I'm saying is that there really needs to be uh, some sort of, uh, like the Ollie theme tried to do with an own, an onboarding process. There need to be some sort of onboarding process for new users to, to get their, their site editing going uh, yeah. in, in a way that's like, I mean, people, you know, the, the most people that come to us, they've, they've already destroyed their templates. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and they come to us and they ask us to fix it. And it's like, wow, how in the world? Uh, and, and I've got like a co-sponsor co or organizer 
And, and he's like, oh, I always edit everything in the, in the site editor, all my pages and stuff. It's like, dude, that's just asking for trouble at, at this mm -hmm. stage. Mm -hmm. But, mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, it, things are coming together. Yeah. 6.5 looks a lot better. Yeah. And I mean, you're not the first person I've heard talk about onboarding. Like there definitely needs to be a better onboarding. Um, from the training team's perspective, um, we one of the things we're going to be looking at after the relaunch is can we get some of our key videos linked in the WordPress dashboard somehow, like onboard, like so like exactly what you mentioned, that homepage changing that initial setup, if we could have like a link to a Learn WordPress video, which is the official WordPress video that walks you through that step, that would be ideal. Um, I know different teams are sort of approaching this from different angles. Um, it's definitely a conversation I've heard. Um, and I think maybe as a training team, for the, for the moment, the best we can do is, for example, if you can just come in and make a video that, meets your audience's needs perfectly and then we can just share that with other people as well um oh, yeah. okay. that might be one way mm. yep but, set up yeah. tweaking setting up or tweaking your wordpress to get started i don't know onboarding is, is a good word yeah. i know there are a lesson that there are at least one or two lessons in progress on the settings just the settings page um mm -hmm. good. and mm -hmm. all the different sections of that and, and how to how to set them up correctly for a new site yeah i mean because you know those are basic <clears> things <throat> anyway i don't mean to turn <clears throat> this into a no no no, no. But, but uh <laughs> yeah like i said no, I, 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 short of going like you like you just said create the content myself uh, I, i'm not sure how i take all of this energy and, and how that fits mm -hmm. in to the piece because I'm not, I'm not currently the content creator. <laughs> it just, uh, um, yeah, isn't my forte. I'm, I'm not, uh, it, it, this is not the face I want to put out there. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I like helping um, people, but I, I don't want to be hmm. the, the, the YouTube face. Mm. Don't, don't lose that passion though, of wanting to help people. Um, oh, I don't. And, yeah. The training team, focus right now is the site redesign but i think there's a lot more we can do to really get our content into the hands of the users after that um yeah. so even just to get feedback from you and your ideas and that i think that would be really great yeah well i talked to laura every friday so yeah well perfect perfect send it yeah. to her <laughs> yeah, well. and carolina has asked whether there are specific areas of contribution that are lacking people that she could help out with. Okay. Yep. Um, that's a great question. I would say at the moment we are lacking content creators and administrators. Um, I feel like the content that is getting created is getting reviewed um, at a good pace. Um, so we need more people to just help us get the content created, especially in preparation for the site relaunch. Um, it's scheduled for July this year. We're working towards that. Um, and also administration. Um, I think we, we just have like two or three people who are doing the majority of administrative work at the moment. So if we could get assistance there, that would help. What, what is administrative that. work? Okay. Well, for example, um, uh, for each of our tutorial presenters are actually vetted before they're allowed to record a video. Um, and so when somebody applies to create a video, um, the administrator will actually go into their, for example, social network history, make sure they haven't done like discriminatory action. Like this is a, a face and a voice we want to have on the, ho uh, the, web the website. Um, and so we have people who are like vetting that. Um, and then we also have like people who send us feedback about content and we collect that feedback in GitHub, but not everybody's comfortable using GitHub. And so we have an email account where people send us feedback or send us different things. Um, and so the administrator then takes that into GitHub, um, anonymizes it, of course, but puts it in GitHub so then anybody can view it and then work on that piece of feedback. So the administrators sort of have a bit of 
backend access um, to different things um, to make to bring the con to bring the task to the different areas of risk track um, contribution. Of Organizing organization. Yeah. Okay. Very good. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining and um, for your input and your questions. Um, it was so good to see you all. I also see Gwen did leave us a bit earlier, um, but um, she did say send us a thank you message. And then Carolina, great. Uh, thank you for your time and guidance. Huge work you are doing. Thank you so much for attending today. Um, and I would love to see you in the training channel, um, but if you have any questions on that, you can reach me in Slack um, or even contact me on the meetup.com event page as well. Um, and yeah, I think we'll call it a wraps there. Thank you for your time today. Thank you. It's a great presentation. Thank you. All right, bye.